it's an environment like no other. We're going in it with no regrets, and we want to put everything out on the floor. We've worked so hard all season, so this is a perfect ending for us. It's kind of surreal because you work your entire year for this moment, and so being able to walk out on the floor and just stand there and even smile is just, you can't take that for granted. I'm just very honored and thrilled to be here and just experience this with all of my friends and teammates. These teams out here are amazing, every single team, so it's gonna be who is the best. Anyone can do really well. It's you know all about what you do on that day. Everybody's on the same page, everybody's working for the same thing, and that makes a difference, I think, when you get at this level and to this very big meet. I feel like we have a team full of champions already. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships, presented by Northwestern Mutual. Welcome to the Chaffetz Arena on the campus of St. Louis University for our live coverage of the 2017 Women's NCAA Gymnastics Championships. Top 12 teams in the country are competing here in two separate semifinal sessions later today. Semifinal two features four SCC teams, including number two LSU, plus Big Ten powers Michigan and Nebraska. Only the top three teams from this session advance to tomorrow's Super Six. But first, the semifinal one coming up now features the undefeated and reigning NCAA champs, Oklahoma, as well as four outstanding Pac-12 teams, plus Denver. Hi everybody, I'm Bart Connor, and I'm proud to be joined by my fellow Olympic medalist, Kathy Johnson-Clark. We started this season back in January the 6th. It's hard to believe it all comes down to this thrilling final week, and there's enormous pressure, particularly in these semifinals. It is enormous pressure, Bart, but that is exactly what brings out the absolute best in women's collegiate gymnastics. It's how these teams come together, support each other, breathe that positive energy, and most important, share the pressure, because every single athlete counts whether they do one event or four events. Now, Oklahoma is the prohibitive favorite in this first semifinal. Let's take a look at their standings this season, the number one ranking since the second week. Look at that impressive score, 197, 425 or better in every meet. And boy, they have some star power as well, because not only are they the reigning champions, but added freshman phenom Maggie Nichols, and this team is outstanding. They have extreme score potential on every event, and part of it is because of Maggie Nichols. She has made the transition to collegiate gymnastics in spectacular fashion. She just lights up the floor on every single event and also brings that consistency. Now, we've talked all season long about the star power in women's collegiate gymnastics. Several world and Olympic champions competing here this weekend. Let's talk about some of these huge names. It is so exciting to see them come into college gymnastics and just shine. Of course, we just talked about Maggie Nichols. Michaela Skinner is doing some of the most outrageously difficult gymnastics in the country right now. Madison Koshin, fresh off a gold medal in Rio, and Kyla Ross, four years before her gold medal with her team. Really exciting. Oh, terrific. Well, for more on these world and Olympic champions, let's go to the third member of our broadcast team, Laura Rutledge. Laura. Yeah, Bart, the star power here is undeniable. And when you talk to Utah's Michaela Skinner, she said it was almost surreal when all of these former elites were reunited at the NCAA banquet a couple nights ago. These are Olympic medalists. They're world champions. They're looking around the table at each other, and they can't help but smile because they're all so happy they made the decision to come to college. For UCLA's Madison Koshin, it was because she wants to go into pediatrics. She wants to get a college education. And then for Skinner, who wants a career in broadcasting, she wanted to make gymnastics fun again. And for some of the best gymnasts in the world, this is a way for them to fall in love with their sport again, Bart. Oh, a lot of the coming up. Oh, and we're glad you have joined us. Don't go away, competition when we come back. is presented by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. And in part by Infinity. Empower the drive. Lewis, we're ready for the competition in the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. Semi-final one. Let's take a look at how these teams prepare in semi-final one. 
for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Remember these three things. Minimize, maximize, capitalize. Every rotation is going to have a different dynamic for each team because they all have strengths and weaknesses and they have to maximize where they're super strong, minimize deductions where they're in their weaker events, and then capitalize if others make mistakes. They got to be ready to step right in. This is our quad box. You can see and you can watch all your favorite teams all day long on the All Around channel, which is available on Watch ESPN. So it's a four ring circus and Bailey Rowe, the outstanding all arounder, starts it off for Utah. And an opportunity for Utah to maximize. They start on one of their best events. They get to end the competition on one of their best events. And Denver over on uneven bar, Sam Ogden starts them off. They have had a tremendous season and they need to get off to a great start here. They competed so well at regionals to secure their spot here at the national championships. They haven't been here since 2009. Starts off so strong and with a stuck landing, keep those in mind, they're gonna be huge throughout this meet. Denver, as you mentioned, has had just an outstanding season and coach Melissa kutcher Reinhardt told us it really started last year after the end of their season last year, they were really intently focused throughout the summer, and that got them on track, and it's paying off here at these national championships. Macy Roberts up now for Utah on the vault. We do not yet have the score for Bailey Rowe. This is the first of six rotations. Remember, there are four teams competing. Excuse me, there are six rotations, four events. So two teams will always be on a bye today, and it's going to be kind of complicated, but we'll try the best we can to keep you updated based on the average scores that these athletes are marking so we can see who's doing the best in the standings. We'll explain that a little bit more as we go on. Right now we're in the first rotation, and even for the judges sometimes it tends to drag a little bit till they get the systems in place. And Bart, keep in mind they have six judges here per event. The high low will be dropped, the low score will be dropped, average the four in between. So the judges having to be in line with each other throughout the competition, that is a challenge in and of itself. And this is different than the regular season when typically the dual meets, they have two judges and they average the scores. Here, as you mentioned, uh, they are accounting for six judges' scores High and low thrown out, four scores in the middle are average, and that's appropriate as we get the postseason competition because as we mentioned earlier, Kathy, these teams are so evenly matched. It takes more judges to separate the great teams from the even greater teams. That said, there are differences in the routines, and that's what we're hoping the judges will see, have a very sophisticated way of assessing these routines because some are far more difficulty. Going to vault now for Utah, Macy Roberts. Macy does a Yurchenko full. The judges are looking for them to land with their chest up just a little bit higher on the landing. Straight to bars now for Washington. Jocelyn Goings was first up there with a 9-7-7-5. This is Maya Washington. Watch for the single bar release moves. You really need to see height, amplitude, good distance from the bar. She finishes strong with a half in, half out. This is a team with three seniors and five freshmen. Has, hasn't been to the national championships in 19 years. Great to see them here. Once again, it's typical of gymnastics competitions like this with team competitions. There are four apparatus, and all four apparatus are going simultaneously, typically. So if you're actually sitting in the stands, this is what you're seeing is our all-around channel, which basically you, some athletes competing, some athletes waiting for a score. But there's a lot of action, typically, at these national championships. And on top of that, there are two teams sitting on the sidelines. They're on buys. Nicole Addison is finishing her balance beam. Oh, no. They had such a good warm-up, too. They were so strong, so focused. Of course, they competed so well at the regionals on this event to secure their spot. Mm -hmm. 
Erica Alfiero now for Oregon State on floor. Taylor Ritchie was their first performer. She had a 9-5-5-2-5. One of the things the athletes have had to get used to is landing, taking off on this spring-loaded floor, up on a podium. It's very bouncy. It takes that much more effort and control on the landings to keep them inbounds. Oregon State was second this year at the Pac-12 Championships, just behind Utah. They missed out in 2016 at the NCAA Championships. Their last year competing here was 2015, but they've had a lot of success. 25 trips to the NCAA Championships for Oregon State. Three times they actually qualified through to the Super Six Final. And depending on which team really shows up here, they had an outstanding competition at the Pac-12s. They struggled at regionals, almost didn't get this qualifying spot. Just moments ago, McKenna Merrill on vault for Utah. Macy Roberts before her had a 9-8, and Bailey Rose score, 9-7-6-2-5, led them off. And McKenna upgraded to a one and a half this season. Great upgrade, gives her an advantage of a 10-0 start value. Unfortunately, she was just a little bit short on rotation and hopped to the side, so you almost give up that advantage in start value. Merrill, the sophomore from Pleasant Grove, Utah, Pac-12 bronze medalist on the floor exercise. There is Megan Marsden, the co-head coach at Utah, and you talk about one of the classiest programs in the country. Of course, Greg Marsden, her husband, started the program over 40 years ago, and they have consistently been one of the finest. Ten times they've won national titles, nine under the NCAA, and one before that under the AIAW. Erica Muha took a step on that Yurchenko full. A Yurchenko full is worth a 995. That's its start value. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Bart, the pressure is real, and Erica was feeling it before that vault. Bailey Rowe having to come up and calm her down a little bit, telling her, reminding her to take some deep breaths, also reminding her of their mantra right now, which is, you make the moment. They want to make sure that they're controlling what they can control, which does have to do with their nerves. You know, what's just interesting, Laura, is what's adding to the tension here is the scores are quite a bit lower than what the gymnasts are used to in the regular season. We're seeing a lot of 9.8s and 9.9s and above in dual meet competition, but today there's only win one score over 9.8, and that was Sam Ogden for Denver on the beam. So a decent routine is scoring in the 9.7 to 9.8 range instead of in a dual meet part of the season, it might be 9.8 to 9.9. Very interesting, that adds a little extra tension because the athletes can feel the tension when the scores are just a little bit tight. Now to the bars, Janae Janik, senior from Washington. 9-8 was the score for Haley Burleson before her. They have one low score. Maya Washington's 9-3-7-5 is the score they'd like to drop. So that gives me a chance to remind people the format here. Six athletes for each team on each event. You count just the top five scores on that event towards their team total. So you can drop a low score. But if you have two mistakes, that could be devastating. So far, a much better routine than at regional. She had a fall. She hit both her release elements and got a pretty good landing on the dismount. Just a couple little form issues on the release moves, legs apart, but very well done. Just moments ago, Tiffany Lewis on the vault coming off of Erica Muhaz 975. Tiffany does a huge Yurchenko full twist in terms of amplitude. Nice block in the air. She was really thinking about the landing throughout the vault. You could tell she wanted that so badly. She piped down just a little bit. The theme for the Utah Red Rocks this year is you define the moment. And uh, so their goal in this semifinal is really to 
focus on the performance, not the score. And that's typically what great teams do under this kind of Absolutely. pressure. Absolutely. You really have to stay in the moment, make every single routine, every skill, every landing count. It's quite common when you come to a meet where there are six teams on the floor, four teams competing simultaneously, to kind of get caught up in the moment. So how do these teams sort of focus on staying in the bubble, Kathy? You practice that all season long. They've, they've been in pressure situations. I can tell you regionals is pressure like no other because it's a do or die, just like these semifinals. So it really creates a, a situation where you have to hyper-focus, but you also have to relax and be normal. Okay, on vault now for Utah. One of the big names we said at the top of the show. Alternate to the 2016 Olympic team. And this is a huge double huge twister. Huge vault, Bart. Double twist. Let's see if she can keep good form. She twists so oh well. My. And like a dart, she just finds that landing. Very, very well done. Utah needed that at the end of this lineup. I think that's the best time I've seen her perform. And she had great clean form throughout. She has cleaned up her form. She gets both hands securely on the table. That's something she didn't do in Elite. Sometimes she'd miss a hand, and that's a big deduction, but boy, she got it this time. That should be a big score. She's coming off of Tiffany Lewis's 9.85. Let's take a look at how high and far she went. Height, her center of gravity, four and a half feet above the table. Almost had a completely straight body all the way to the landing. Her legs are just slightly apart, eight and a half feet out. Wow. That's a big ball for the freshman phenom, Pac-12 champion in the all-around and a couple of individual events as well. Moments ago, Madison Kopiak on the bar. Janae Janik had a 9-8-1-2-5. That's a season high for her, and they're high on the event so far. Nice to see that height reverse hecked. They have one low score they need to drop on this event. The judges are also looking for those handstands to be right on top of the bar. Very good on the landing. You'll notice in the bottom right, those are the average scores since not every team has competed the same number of performances. We're gonna kind of keep you on tabs by noting the average scores throughout the competition. So at this point, based on the averages, Utah on top, Washington, Denver, Oregon State is third, and Denver fourth in this first of six rotations. This is a situation where Washington really wants to come up with a big routine here. They want to drop that low score that will raise their average and keep them in the mix. Judges are looking for a straight arm swing, very smooth, rhythmic swing. Caitlin Duranchik. Outstanding on this event. 9.875 was the score for Madison Kopiak before her. Look just a little bit short on that last hand, but what a gorgeous double layout in the air, but unfortunately piked down pretty severely and couldn't quite get the stick on the landing. Take a look at those handstand positions. The judges sit right on the side. You can see them lined up right there on the table. She's a little bit shy of vertical. There's no deduction if you're within 10 degrees, but if you talk to any coach, they're gonna tell you they will take a little deduction for not being right on top. And of course, a step on the landing, that'll cost you as well. Ranchik, the senior from Sebastopol, California, wrapping up the rotation one for Washington on the bars. They've had three scores, nine, eight or higher. Julia Ross set to go on beam now for Denver. Their high score there, two of them, Caitlin Scow and Sam Ogden, both have nine, eight, three, seven, fives, but they're trying to replace the score of Nicole Addison, which was a nine, two, three, seven, five. Julia is a second team, regular season All-American on balance beam and in the all around beautiful switch ring leap.
seem like a lot of the top teams here have at least two superb all-arounders, and that's really the case here for Denver because Maddie Carr and Julia Ross typically compete in the all-around. Ross uh, did her club training at Brown Gymnastics in Las Vegas. She's a senior and Carr is just a freshman. Dismount Ariel Cartwell into the full. Mm. Oh gosh, that's too bad. I liked how relaxed she was through that beam performance and then just kind of fell apart a little bit on the landing of the dismount. Moments ago, Madeline Gardner on the floor for Oregon State. Former national team member from Canada. Oregon State actually has six athletes on their team from foreign countries. Triple twist, really nice start. They have five Canadian national team members on their team and one young lady from Australia. She does a nice job of really showing the dance. Tanya Chaplin does an excellent job with the choreography on this event. Of course, she was a gymnast at UCLA and also for the U.S. national team at the World Championships, doing a terrific job with this program. Gardner was competing last year here at the national championships as an individual because Oregon State missed out as a full team. And so I'm sure she's thrilled to be back here with the backup of this terrific team. And they did have an outstanding year. They seem to be peaking at the right time. Their last four meets have all been over 197. Talking to Tanya Chaplin's husband, Michael, who was a former gymnast at UCLA as well. And he said, you know, in the past, we've lacked those big scores at the end of the lineup, but now we have them. Finished really strong with a pike double back. Very well done. Maddie Carr on beam finishing up for Denver. So they have had four hit routines. Once again, they're trying to replace the 9 2 3 7 5. And Maddie Carr, the superb freshman who's really been a game changer for them this year. She's 10th in the all around in the NCAA. Very nice combination aerial cartwheel to the back handspring. A little unusual way of fulfilling that acrobatic series requirement. It's the first appearance for Denver at the NCAA championships since back in 2008. Katie Anna McMillan is wrapping it up for Oregon State on the floor. Madeline Gardner, by the way, before her had a 9 8 7 5. Very controlled landing on the double layout. Keep in mind the judges are really trying to separate the tumbling difficulty. You will see double backs in tucked position, pike, laid out. Laid out is the most difficult. Very solid routine for Denver to finish off with and a stuck landing, well done. Denver has five hit routines on beam. That is a great way to start the competition under this pressure. McMillan, the Pac-12 Gymnast of the Year, on the floor now, wrapping up this rotation for Oregon State. Their lowest score was a 9.5625, and their highest a 9.875. A very solid rotation for Oregon State. Really finished strong with those last two performances. Two outstanding all-arounders again at the end of the lineup for Oregon State. Madeline Gardner and Katie Anna McMillan. All right, that's the first of six wild rotations here on semifinal number one. Four teams competed. Two teams, as you see, Oklahoma and UCLA were on buys. Michaela Skinner, her score is in a 9-9 coming off of Tiffany Lewis's 9-8-5. Let's take a look at that one more time, Kathy. This was probably as well as she can do it. Absolutely. It was so well done, cleaner than usual. Almost got an absolutely perfect landing. One foot was slightly in front of the other. 
and just a little hop, hop back. Most important though, Utah needed that big score. We need to see stores, scores start bumping into that 9-9 range. The score for Maddie Carr, a 9-8-3-7-5. So a great job in the first rotation for Denver. And let's go down to Laura, she's with their coach. All right, yes, here with Melissa Kutcher Reinhardt. And coach, how would you describe the way that your team was able to work around a fall for five pit routines on beam? You know, it just took one routine at a time. I think first event, starting on beam at the national championships, a little tight, let the nerves get to them just a bit, but we'll be ready. There'll be no holding back after this. So now you head into a bye. What's the plan on the bye as you prepare then to head to floor? I think for us right now, it's just about dialing out, letting them relax for a second, and then being ready to go when we hit floor. This is the first time that this team has been at the NCAA since 2008. How would you describe the work that it took to get here? Oh, they've been so tough, mentally tough. They've been gritty and determined, and we're not done yet. All right, I love it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bart. Okay, congratulations, Melissa. Right. Try to happy to have it at Denver here. Melissa in her 18th season has done a really nice job. They're the first private school, small private school to qualify to the NCAA championship. They did that back in 2001. And here are the overall scores. Utah and Oregon State after the first rotation tied. Washington is third. Denver just a little less than a tenth behind, and then Oklahoma and UCLA on a bye in that first rotation. And when you look at this score of Utah, 40, just barely over 49, this was an event they really needed to maximize on because it's one of their best events, so I, I'm sure they wanted to see just a little more stuck landings, a little higher scores, and didn't quite get it. All right, well, we'll come back with some highlights of the first rotation when we come back to St. Louis. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships is presented by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. And in part by Infinity. Empower the drive. Lewis and we are thrilled to be here with 12 of the finest gymnastics teams in the country for the 2017 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. We are underway. Let's take a look at the scores after the first of six rotations and let's start it off with Utah on the vault. They were terrific. Tiffany Lewis and then Skinner did not disappoint. Those were definitely the two highlights in this vault rotation and they needed those Big vaults and big scores to bolster that team score on vault. Haley Burleson for Washington on the bars. She came up so big for them, hit a 9-8, got a stuck landing. That was after a mistake, and then Madison Kopiak had their high score on this event. I think they'll be really, really happy with that performance. Nicole Addison, of course, for Denver. Air, had troubles on her aerial cartwheel, a fall. That puts pressure on the rest of the rotation. And the rest of the lineup delivered terrifically. Caitlin Scow, a 9-8-3-7-5. And Maddie Carr, the freshman. They really came up strong, anchoring balance beam. It's not an easy event to start on, particularly for a team who hasn't been in the national championships in many, many years. Katie Anna McMillan, she, oh, excuse me, Sylvia Colusi Palaya, 9.8. And Katie Anna McMillan. Oregon State looked much sharper on floor exercise and finished off so strong with Katie Anna McMillan. 9 9 routine here, much needed big score. So rotation two is next. Oklahoma and UCLA will join in the action. Don't go away. It's all in. It's to be in the moment. Commit to three, which means commit to three national championships. We're gonna rise up and do our very best there. We always do this like, little thing where you stand in a circle and we like, snap and then say like work. 
you know, just to go out there and work it. We're just really excited to show everyone what we got. You know, saying commit to three has been in the back of our heads for every competition, and we're here to uh, make it happen. Those, those mottos, those thoughts that they have all together make it so important in dealing with this kind of pressure. All right, well, Oklahoma will join the fray now, so will UCLA, and let's go down to Laura Rutledge for more. Bart, we just heard Oklahoma's motto, commit to three. Chase Katz, their senior, told me that that was very important to them. They had not won back-to-back -back national championships. They knew there would be a huge target on their back. So as soon as they won the national championship last year, they immediately went back to the gym, talked about it, and said, hey, we need to commit every single day to our training, our nutrition. Every ounce of everything we do needs to go into winning another national championship. They feel like they've done that, and they think they're dedication to those details has prepared them very well for not only this competition in semifinals, but hopefully a chance for Super 6. Thank you, Laura. Sooners. Yes, the Sooners won in 2014 in a tie with the University of Florida. Then they won outright last year, and they are focused on a shot at it again this year. And based on their consistency and season standings, they are one of the favorites, and we expect it would likely come down to Oklahoma and LSU tomorrow night if things play out according to paper, but that's not well, how sports not works. Not only <laughs> do they do big gymnastics, and they are very consistent, but they also pay close attention. As Laura mentioned, that is so critical um, when every move counts, every skill, every landing. Once again, remember we're focusing on the four teams in this rotation. You can watch your favorite team all day long on the All Around channel, which is available on Watch ESPN. We'll cover every competitor on every apparatus, so make sure you pull up a second screen to enhance your experience. This is a huge event for UCLA. This is a maximize event for them. They need to come out huge and swing and big because they can be spectacular here. So far, so good with their first routine. Sonia Mraz finishes with the double lap. A step back. They're going to take a deduction there. Just moments ago on vault, Erica Alfirio from Oregon State got them off to a good start. They really have to stick these landings on this event to stay in it with UCLA in this rotation. Great landing in terms of no movement. Her chest was a little low, though, on the landing. They're looking at the amplitude of the vault as well. Charity Jones for Oklahoma on the floor in their leadoff performance. Their first routine of their campaign to try to win a national championship. Charity Jones from Oklahoma. Strong finish. They have so much support in this arena. Their fans are sitting right behind us. I can hear them screaming. Oklahoma does such a great job with their choreography. KJ Kindler really loves to engage the audience, tell a story. So it's from the choice of the music to the choreography to the character theme of the routine makes them very special. Janae Honest, UCLA got a few words of encouragement from Chris Waller, the co-head coach there at UCLA. Sonia Mraz, a terrific start, 9-8. And Kathy, you mentioned UCLA starts off on two big events, bars and beam, and they're a little bit weaker, admittedly, on floor and vault. So you're right, they have to maximize the scores right now if they're gonna be a contender today. They have today. to run up the scores on these first two events so as not to put too much pressure on them when they get to floor and vault. They need a landing here. Oh, Very nice. well done. Very well done on that landing. Janae was a Pac-12 champion a year ago on this event. And that is huge. Chris Waller, associate head coach there, thrilled with that. She competed in all 12 meets this season on bars. 26 meets in a row, real consistent. Sabrina Gill for Oregon State now after the 9-8 for Alfiero. Alfiero. 
A Yurchenko fold. Notice that her head was below the level of the table, though. Really needs to see bigger vaults to get those scores up. Charity Jones led off Oklahoma with a 9.875. Now, Natalie Brown. And this is an exquisite floor routine. Brown, the junior from Dallas, Texas, did her club training at the World Olympic Gymnastic Academy, home of Olympic champions. Opens with a front double twist. Good difficulty in that front tumbling. She's not a powerhouse tumbler, so she must really excel with the finesse and really showing off the choreography and her beautiful dance skills. <gasps> wow, she must have eyeballs in her toes. She landed <laughs> right next to that line, controlled it. Extremely impressed with the choreography that KJ Kindler does. A lot of coaches sort of outsource their choreography to specialists, but she's one of the few collegiate coaches that does the choreography herself. And every one of these routines has a special meaning and a special music to these young ladies. This one's theme is the Syrian refugee crisis. KJ Kindler's brother works for the American Syrian refugee committee and it's really extraordinarily emotional and you can see it in her performance. Beautiful. Inspiring routine from Natalie Brown, the junior from Plano, Texas. We noted the scores were tight in the first rotation. UCL, Utah, by the way, on vault had their lowest score of the season. Oklahoma, the first score is a 9.875. Watch this, Bart. Right to the edge of the floor mat, the landing controls it and steps back into the floor area. <laughs> I well like done. you said, eyeballs in her <laughs> toes. <Yes>. Well done. <laughs> So two hit routines for the Oklahoma Sooners in this semi-final number one. Remember, only three of these six teams will advance to the Super Six final, which is tomorrow night. That is the one, the stage is being set today for that drama tomorrow night. You can see that individual placard with the individual Judges score of 9-9 nine, nine posting. Again, they six judges drop high and low, average the four. Mary Jacobson now for Oregon State. Their scores there range be from, from 9 to 7 5 from Sabrina Gill to Alfiero's 9-8. So solid. Well done on the landing. They don't quite have the amplitude, the bigness of their vault. So they really must. This is a, this is an area where you minimize. They can't get the huge scores from the amplitude or the difficulty of their vault, but they don't give anything away by sticking a landing. But a rare laid out Sukara full. How about this? We've talked about the stars in this meet, and here is the one young lady from the final five who has a gold medal from the Rio Olympics, Madison Koshin. The reason she was on that team, she's an outstanding athlete, but it was because she's superb on this event that she was selected to compete for the U.S. team in Rio. And she doesn't do all the difficulty that she did in Rio. She has a little bit of a shoulder issue, pain in that shoulder. But what she does is quite spectacular. Transitions back and forth between the bars, showing difficulty on those transition moves. Nice stalder work and a big high dismount. Not quite a stick on the landing. This is a full twisting double back. It's two flips, one twist. Spotted the landing, but was a little over rotated and had to hop back. UCLA, the only team in history of collegiate gymnastics to have two Olympic gold medalists on the team. And that, of course, is Madison Koshin, 2016, and from 2012, Kyla Ross. We watched UCLA, they don't quite have the depth as some of the other teams, and even as of last night, they were manipulating their lineup, trying to find out how they could maximize their team score and advance through to the Super Six Finals, Kathy. Exactly. Anytime they have a little injury, it's really a shuffle board game, trying to move, move the pieces, get an athlete in that position. I think, as you said, they, they have all this enormous potential, but they have yet to fire on all cylinders this year.
Katie Anna McMillan. Mary Jacobson before her had a 9-8. So a pair of 9-8s lead Oregon State's vaults. There's the one and a half. Oh, a higher start value, but unfortunately that's a gigantic step out of it. Really over-rotated that vault. That's the risk reward by going for a vault that's worth a half a tenth more is a riskier landing. Kyla Ross now, and she can be superb here. She can be near perfect. Watch how straight her legs are, her arms, her back and her handstands just completely straight. Beautiful technique. Nails that handstand on the high bar. And her double layout is fabulous. It is huge. Oh, nice. And she punctuates it with a stick. Just near perfection. The five-time world medalist and Olympic champion delivers a big routine there. All UCLA scores, by the way, on bars are 9-8 or higher so far. Just a beautiful position, not just on top of the bar in terms of degrees, but perfectly straight back, no angle in her shoulders, and look at the landing. Nicely done for the Pac-12 Gymnast of the Year. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship continues tomorrow with the Super 6 Team Championship. Covers continues at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the 90 NCAA championships, log on to NCAA.com. Just saw a big bounce out of bounds on floor exercise for Oklahoma. Chase Caps on the floor for the Sooners. Brenna Dowell before her had a 9.875. So the Sooners on floor in this first rotation, two 9.875s. Oklahoma is one of the teams that they can have some little mistakes and still move through these semifinals. They have that much score potential above and beyond many of the other teams. Chase Caps on her floor routine just moments ago for the Sooners. We saw a huge pike double back, which is bounced back. So deductions for each of those bounces and then another tenth of a point off for out of bounds. Oh, this could be a highlight here. Christine Peng Peng Lee from <laughs> UCLA. She was extraordinary in warmups. The biggest, highest flying release moves. Watch this, full twist down to the low bar. Superb, and she's coming off a 9.95 from Kyla Ross. You want to see risk like this rewarded by the judges because she does way more difficulty with those two release moves. Here's a double layout. Almost <laughs> got the stick. In her warm-ups was absolute perfection and huge. This was really, really great gymnastics. I think, Kathy, you set the stage right. UCLA had to hit bars, and they did it superbly in the first rotation. This is such great height above the bar, two feet above the bar. She was a little bit close when she regrassed. She handled it. This is a Bahardwaj or a full twisting pack salto down, and doesn't that look fun? <laughs> uh, yeah. At least from this seat. <laughs> So UCLA outstanding in the first rotation for them on the bars. The lowest score there, a 9-8. That was Sonia Mraz in the leadoff position, but Kyla Ross had a 9-9-5. There were no 9-9s yet today, and that's so far the highest score of the day in this meet. And Peng Peng Lee will expect to receive a terrific score as well. So just three events going on now. Maggie Nichols getting set to go on the floor for the Oklahoma Sooners. We noted at the top of the show, she, of course, is a world champion, and she was just left off the Olympic team in 2016. She had a knee injury in the qualification series leading up to it, and uh, most people feel had she had a little bit more time, uh, she could have been placed on that team easily and therefore have an Olympic gold medal around her neck as well. Absolutely. She has fans all over who love not only her gymnastics, her spirit. She took that disappointment in stride, immediately turned her attention to what she could do for this team. Has remained humble and just such an important part to their success. 
Very nice ball twisting double back. You notice the tape on her right knee about a month and a half ago. She incurred a little bit of a bone bruise in the dual meet against Georgia. And so the team kind of rested her and said, hey, we have enough depth this year. We have eight potential competitors on every event. We can give you a chance to recover for the national championships. Let's go down to Laura. Bart, Maggie watched this NCAA championships last year on TV, watching her future team win it. She said she cried more than the girls who were here. She was so excited to be a part of that. And that's when she knew that she wanted to be a part of getting this team back here to this moment. Oklahoma's had two athletes go out of bounds on floor exercise. Chase Caps went out, as did Natalie Brown. A lot of power, it's hard to control it sometimes. What's beautiful of Maggie's gymnastics is how powerful it is, but so much finesse as well. So soft on the landings, great combination of qualities. Could be a big weekend coming up from this young lady. She's number one in the country in the all around. And she's leading the undefeated Sooners as they try to win their third national title. Yes, she has power, but look at the elegance that she shows in these hardest skills. Very soft landing. She absorbs really the, the power. You have to concentrate it all in on this landing, absorb the landing so you don't bounce out of bounds. And she does it so well. Freshman Maggie Nichols. World Championship gold medalist and the freshman phenom. Haley Burleson for Washington on beam. Scores there, the highest score is Jocelyn Goings, 9.8875. Janae Janik had a 9.85. So the low score is only a 9.625 they hope to drop with Burleson's performance. This her series, Ariel Walker of the back handspring. You really have to be very careful on those, that the arms keep moving, that there's no hesitation between those skills. Such long legs, long arms, looks really beautiful on balance beam. The junior from Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, she's five feet, six inches tall. I mean. It's not tall, typically, but in this arena, she looks extremely tall. <laughs> Most of the gymnasts average out to be about 5'1 and a half, or 5'2 at the highest levels of the sport. Really like the confidence that she showed. Very, very calm, very poised throughout the entire routine. Outstanding score on floor exercise for Maggie Nichols, a 9.925. So the lowest score for the Sooners was Chase Capps, 9.7125. And uncharacteristically, two Sooners have gone out of bounds, Natalie Brown and Chase Capps. Now, just moments ago, A.J. Jackson started her routine on the floor, and this is really cool. It's a very moody kind of mysterious routine. And packed with power as well. Huge tumbling. Watch how open she is on this. Open, full out. Very different quality to her dance, to the choreography. The music here is Purple Lamborghini. She's supposed to be a graffiti artist sneaking around at nighttime. She not only has the power in her tumbling, but even her leaps, her jumps are very explosive. The junior from Belton, Missouri did her club training at Eagles Gymnastics and Coach Kindler said she is literally in the best shape of her career. You could see the power in her. Tumbling is evident for sure.
She opened with huge difficulty and finishes with a giant pike double back. Super high, very open pike position. Well done. She's coming up after the 9-9-2-5 from Maggie Nichols. So the score they're hoping to replace is an uncharacteristically low score for Chase Capps. The 9-7-1-2-5 after Capps stumbled on her landing and stepped out of bounds. Kathy, as you mentioned at the top of the show, UCLA had to maximize their opportunities on bars and they did just that, didn't they? Absolutely, big swing. Big amplitude and really zoned in on those landings. Got some good sticks. After Kyla Ross's 9.95, Peng Peng Lee had a 9.8875. And this was just utter perfection. Perfectly straight body, smooth, effortless swing. You never want anybody to catch you working too hard on bars. It's got to look easy, and she makes it look easy as can be. So UCLA did exactly what they needed to do and by average score, a 9-8-7-2-5 over Oklahoma's 9-8-7, UCLA is in the lead. Okay, Washington off to a good start as well and their coach is with our Laura. All right, thank you so much, Barton. Yes, here with Coach Elise Ray. Coach, six hit routines on this beam rotation. How would you describe your thoughts on the way that your team's done so far? I am incredibly, incredibly proud of them. We lost one of our beam, best beam workers at regionals, and so we had a brand new lineup up there at nationals, and they handled it beautifully. We had two freshmen in the lineup. Um, couldn't be more proud. It seems like the energy over here has definitely increased for your team. As you head into a bye, what would you say about the way that they've responded to this environment so far? They're doing so well. I mean, I can tell they're a little nervous. It's a big stage for them, but our goal tonight is to have fun and to just leave it all out on the floor. And that's what they're doing so far. And so the bye, they're going to go dance. They're going to have fun, come back out fired up. We want to go in there and be part of that dance party. <laughs> <laughs> so you will head to floor after that bye, and you said leave it all out on the floor. So how does that apply to that next rotation? It means dancing your heart out. It means trusting your tumbling passes, your leap passes, and just doing exactly what they do in training, trusting that and having a blast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bart, Elise Ray, all a great right. gymnast in her own right. The Ray named after her. Absolutely. Great to have her in the house as a top-notch coach these days. Okay, here are the standings after two rotations. Don't go away. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. And here is the score. There's a lot of numbers on that graphic, folks, but based on two rotations, you can see Washington and Oregon State are the only teams that have done two events. The other four behind them have done just one, but based on averages, UCLA is our leader. Adiana McMillan, 9775, a big, jump on that difficult Really ball. too bad because she went for the added difficulty. Danielle the Saints though, she helped them out. And remember, this is what I said, college gymnastics is all about. You step up when there's been a mistake. Unfortunately, she was a little bit crooked, went off to the side on this ball, but came up with a big difficulty ball, just deducted on the landing. And Madison Koshin, was outstanding on the bars and a great rotation to start the meet for UCLA. They absolutely swung for the fence and were nearly as great as they were in the warm-ups. Their warm-ups were amazing, including Peng Peng Lee. Was phenomenal in the warm-up. She was a little close on that release move, but the sign of a great champion is one who works through those little issues and makes it as great as it can be. Washington struggled on beam a little bit. 9-6-2-5 was the score for Maya Washington. She hung in there. Absolutely. Elise Ray said she could tell her athletes were nervous. This is a huge stage. And it was a little bit like surfing there, but she held on and saved it. The last time they were at the national championship, 19 years ago. So you can expect some nerve. Jocelyn going to the nice job. Really nice to see them follow up. One of their teammates who had a little bit of trouble, but come up big for the team. Oklahoma 
number three all-arounder in the country, Chase Caps, couldn't contain her power. And normally we see her explode off the floor and find those landings, just not quite for that one. AJ Jackson finished the rotation after Maggie Nichols with a 9-9-2-5. Jackson got her own. A very dynamic routine. They took little deductions for bounce on the landing, but really strong start for Oklahoma. And when we come back to St. Louis, Utah, UCLA, Oklahoma, and Washington will all be competing in the third rotation. Saturday starting at 3 p.m. Eastern, our coverage ships off at 2.30 on ABC with NBA Countdown presented by Straight Talk Wireless. And all games are available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Bart, we will see Ping Ping Lee on beam for UCLA in this rotation. And yes, she is an exceptional collegiate gymnast, a former elite as well. But she also has many other talents. Growing up, she played tennis and golf. She also played a lot of musical instruments. She still has jam sessions in her dorm room with her guitar. She's a great singer. I mean, can she share the talent with the rest of us? We'd all like to have a few talents as well. I think Ping Ping Lee has all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Yes, you know, and UCLA has mastered the, uh, the world of social media, so they're quite prolific about sharing the talents of these young ladies around the world, and it has really earned them a lot of fans, hasn't it? Alex Marks in the upper left for Oklahoma to lead them off on the ball. They had such an organized um, warm-up, so it was nice to see they really... They do everything you have to do to be so consistent in competition, and it usually pays off. Michaela Skinner getting set to go on bars for Utah. UCLA on the beam. Michaela Gerber opened up from them. And Courtney Loper for Denver on the floor. Once again, it's a four-ring circus here at Nationals. And Skinner, we saw her outstanding vault in the first rotation. Utah, as we mentioned, had their lowest score of the year on vault. And I think they missed a few landings, but on top of that, the scores were quite tight in that first rotation on vault. This is a very strategic move, putting Michaela Skinner up first on uneven bars. It's not her best event, but it's a strong event, and she can get them off to a good start. She was a little overbalanced on that handstand. The transition down to low bar didn't quite get that, but boy, did she come up big on the landing. She truly has such amazing kinesthetic awareness, her ability to flip and twist and find the landing. But check this handstand out here. This cast was just, it's short. That's gonna be a deduction. They really need to be on top of the bar. She got it back on the landing, but they will take those deductions. Chase Caps for the Sooners on ball. Alex Marks led them off with a 9-8-2-5. She has one of the <laughs> most beautiful, clean Yurchenko fulls. Yes, the start value is 9-9-5, but it is worth it for her to throw that vault because she does it so perfectly. She couldn't control her quite control her power on floor, but she certainly did it here. She bottled it right here. Her straight body, almost five feet off the table. But th what I love is her open body, and she maintains that straight body all the way to the landing. She is so strong that she's able to stick this landing. Watch how straight, right here, opens out, straight body, chest up on the landing. That's superb. And superb form, particularly in the pre-flight, where lots of times the gymnast's feet come apart as they launch onto the vault table. Nicely done for Chase Caps. Missy Reinstetler now for Utah on bars. Michaela Skinner, a 9-8-3-7-5. So we'll see if that strategy pays off. They put her up first. She was a little off on one handstand, but a pretty decent score. A little leg separation on that pirouette. They look just a little bit tight. Real, oh. Wow. Again, a leg separation is almost slightly overbalanced. This is nerves. 
where you're just thinking too hard, might have been a little short on that last handstand. A little off the rhythm here, but nice on the dismount. Great for her to not give away a tenth of a point on the landing. Coach Megan Marsden told us that the midway point in the season when they had that loss against Oregon State, it really refocused their team. Jade Degovea now for the Sooners. Now one of the things that's gonna make a difference is how many Tenno start values do the top teams do? Some teams have only two or three, others have four or five, that's an advantage. Chase Caps, by the way, her score is in a 9-9. Moments ago for UCLA on wow. beam, Haley Mosette. Unfortunately on her series, back hands oh. from step out completely off to the side. Really unfortunate break there. They're coming off a 9-8, 6-2-5 from Michaela Gerber in the leadoff spot. Okay, well, the make or break routines for UCLA, bars and beam need to be solid if they're gonna advance through to the Super Six final tomorrow night. McKenna Merrill for Utah now on bars. Missy Ryan Statler, those form deductions were taken into account. So 9775 was her final score. After great hard work and adding that skill to the bar routine, she is in the lineup. So cool to see Adelchev on uneven bars. It's a rare release move. Does it quite well. Stalled her right into it. Oh, that dismount went out, but she managed to find the landing. The sophomore from Pleasant Grove, Utah. Moments ago for the Sooners, Brenna Dow, who has a world championship gold medal of her own. Look at the speed, power, and technique. When it all comes together, you get a big vault, but unfortunately, oh, she stuck almost everyone in the warm-ups and unfortunately had a big hop forward there. So the Sooners have two 9-8-2-5 from Degovea and Marks, the 9-9 from Chase Caps. Let's go down to Laura Relich. Well, we'll see Madison Koshin here on beam for UCLA and a cool moment just a moment ago after she fell in her beam routine, Haley Mosette came over to Koshin and said, you're going to be fine. We trust you. You can see how bonded this team is. That's critical, especially on this gutsy event. Four events going simultaneously, a lot of chaos and the real challenge is to keep in the bubble under this enormous pressure. Exactly. Madison has been very consistent on balance beam throughout the season. All of the skills she performs are really easy for her to do and to do well. It's a matter of handling your nerves in this type of do or die pressure situation. That handspin layout step out. UCLA works very hard to relax on balance beam and to perform it. You will see them smile, breathe, be very calm. That is just something that Coach Val demands of her athletes. I don't care if you smiled in elite when you did balance beam, but you are going to smile here. <laughs> it relaxes you. Literally, she said, she said the science proves that it releases endorphins in the brain that give you a sense of calm and confidence. Well, it worked here, double twist, oh, a hop back. Take a little reduction on that landing, but good comeback after the fall. Check the form on her splits here, Kathy. We call this our splitometer, just beautiful. They have to go beyond that 180 for us to really register the full split. I also watch that back leg and back foot to make sure they stay pointed and legs straight. A clutch performer from the young freshman, Madison Koshin, after the mistake from Ali Mosset. Moments ago for the Sooners, A.J. Jackson coming after Brenna Dowell's 9-7-6-2-5. And they really needed a big vault here. They got it with A.J. Jackson's one and a half. 
Not quite a stuck landing, but a really big explosive vault and a controlled landing. Sometimes these coaches adjust the lineups, but it does appear that the Sooners are using 4 10 0 start values in this particular session. AJ Jackson's score just came in a 9 9, and Maggie Nichols will be their final performance on the vault for the Sooners. This will complete their second rotation. We'll know all the teams have competed in two events after the end of this rotation three. Maggie does a one and a half two. She often has an uncanny way of finding oh. the landing and there it is. She just feels it, sees it, feels it, and finishes it. What a smooth transition that young lady has made from the elite world into collegiate competition. Kyla Ross now for UCLA on beam coming off of Koshin's 98725. And when you've just seen Maggie Nichols really come up with a vault that we just did, Kyla Ross can do that on balance beam. She is as calm and picture perfect on this event. She really strives to show all of the pictures in the air, the leaps, perfect legs, toe point. She won the Pac-12 championships this year with a perfect 10. Here we'll walk over. You can see her really bring her arms down sharply to emphasize the control she has on this event. She does a combination for her dismount aerial cartwheel into a full. Oh, and as so always, beautiful. I don't know if I've ever seen her not stick that dismount. It's really interesting the calming sensation you get when you watch her. She doesn't seem to rush. You're not nervous for her, are you? No. As I said, you, you, you don't want to let anybody catch you working too hard, sweating anything. She is just serene on balance beam. And that has a lot to do with her superb technique. The young freshman from UCLA handing it off to Peng Peng Lee, who will be up next. So the Bruins need to replace the score of 9.2 from Mosette. So, Ross's routine is in, it was good. They have two more to finish it out. Kari Lee on bars for Utah. Their scores have all ranged between 9.775 and 9.8375. A little bit of toe point issues in this routine, but very nice position on that release move. Reached out, made the grease regrass with straight arms. Love to see that, just a little Tighter on the toes, she needs to be. Dismount, half in, half oh. out. Unfortunately, she slung that out, landed very short. In fact, I think it might have hurt her ankles. That's not a great landing on your joint. She just slung it out, her, missed her release point. In warm-ups, she was too close to the bar, and I think she made the correction and just slung it out, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, so Kari Lee finishes up there. Score for Kyla Ross. Just came in a 9-9-6-2-5, as you predicted, Kathy Johnson-Clark. That was superb, and that just sets up the final two beam performers who are spectacular. Look at those flares on the balance beam. This routine will stand out head and shoulders above so many balance beam routines. She takes such risk with the difficulty in both the dance and in her skills. Beautiful full split. I love the way she changes her pace, her rhythm. She does a back handspring layout to two feet right here. Oh! oh. What a Broke save! It, it was a great save, but unfortunately you don't get bonus for saves. They will take the disc deduction for bending over. Look at that double turn into a beat jump. You don't have to take that kind of risk, and she does. You would like them to give back some bonus points for the balance break. It just doesn't work that way. Great dismount. Aerial cart with a full. What a fabulous routine. Unfortunately, there will be a deduction. 
Peng Peng Lee, the red shirt senior from Canada. She was a finalist for the AAI award, which is essentially the Heisman Trophy of the sport. Here, here's what I love, not just the full split. Look at the back leg. She maintains that toe point at the very height of the jump. Some people lose that toe point, but look at that. She was off from the beginning. So the fact that she was able to pull it back over the balance beam in the air was remarkable. A true beamer does a great job. So the big score for UCLA over there still is Tyler Ross's 99625. That's the high score of the day of any performance. Hoping to replace the 9-2 and get five of six outstanding scores to help UCLA have their shot at advancing. Yeah. This was an event that, this was a maximize event because they are so good, just like they are on bars, on balance beam. Really hope to see Peng Peng nail perfectly that routine. Didn't quite do it, but this next routine, Caitlin Ohashi, and I, I hate to tell people she hurt her ankle uh, the day after regionals, rolled her ankle, warming up on floor, just running. Um, she will not be doing her spectacular pass on beam, which is a triple series, two back handsprings into a layout full. No one does that in college gymnastics, and it is phenomenal. That said, she's altered the routine. It, it will still be scored from a 10. She has a great start value. And she's entertaining on the balance beam. We're just not gonna see her big trick. All right, you can see there in the right-hand column the scores for UCLA. Peng Peng Lee's 97625. They have the 92 that they're hoping yeah. to drop. So enormous pressure right now on a make it or break it event. Here's the new series that she put in in place. It's very simple for her to do. And in some ways, it, it's a shame that that's worth the same. Uh, we that's should differentiate point. it. And they don't. But look at the gorgeous position she just showed on those leaps. Her posture on balance beam is just impeccable. She scored a perfect 10 on March 12th. She did it on March 5th as well, so two weeks in a row. Perfect 10s on beam in the regular oh, season. And a little <laughs> wink. Uh, just in case you didn't know I'm relaxed up here. I'm a beamer, I love beam. Uh, and a back handspring <laughs> layout to her full twist. Excellent balance beam routine. And, and folks out there, this is a gymnast who was one of the best beamers in the world. In the world. Just gorgeous positions in those leaps. Exquisite, really. And she adds difficulty into the dismount. Tumbles right through to the full twist and a perfect landing. And a gutsy performance in the rotation here for UCLA, needing to replace a 9.2. So, moments ago, Claire Hammond on floor for Denver. Their scores have all been 9, 8, 1, 2, 5 or better. So really solid, consistent effort for Denver here. I was very impressed watching them in training yesterday and in the warm-ups. Looked like she might have stepped out of bounds. I saw the judge's hand go up. Usually it's a yellow flag, you see. Denver had a big meet at the regionals. They finished behind Utah by just one-tenth of a point. It was a big inspirational boost for this team knowing they could compete small private school competing against some of the big dogs in collegiate gymnastics as i said at the top of the show it's the teammates who create the positive energy that really breeds those good results look at the support she has from the team urging her on for the final tumbling pass. They have really done a nice job with their floor routines. Their head coach, Melissa kutcher Reinhardt was telling me yesterday that a lot of this momentum started after Nina McGee won the floor national title 
and Denver started thinking, hey, wait, we can contend for championships. We're as good as these legacy teams that we're competing against, and it's showing here today they're doing a really solid, consistent job across the board. No score lower than 98125 for Denver on that event. Other teams have had higher ups and downs, but that score in now for Clear Hammond was the 97375. So their anchor performer will actually be the score they'll drop. Oh, and the score for Ohashi came in at a 99125. So gutsy performances. Caitlin Ohashi in particular. And what they really need to do was, if Peng Peng could have hit her routine the way she could, they'd have those three huge 9-9 plus scores. But Caitlin Ohashi, knowing she had sprained her ankle and was even questionable whether she could do balance beam at all, came up huge in the anchor position. Nicely done for the Bruins here in the third rotation. Clutch and gutsy performances for Miss Val's team on the beam. All right, let's go down to Laura Rutledge. She is with Tanya Chap. All right, thanks so much, Bart. And Coach, when we talk about the environment out here, as you head into the fourth rotation, how do you hope your team's nerves have kind of calmed down a little bit? Well, yeah, we definitely saw the nerves in the first two events. And, you know, we talked about it. It's go back in the locker room, new life. Um, you know, they've already been out here and just go for it, you know, uh, feel unstoppable and leave, you know, have no regrets when you leave the floor. And that's what I wish for them, you know, so. What do you think is the biggest key for bars as you head to that next event? Really relaxing on the next two events and kind of getting into that zone and they know how to do that. So that's what I'm hoping to see comes out of the locker room. You have the good fortune to finish on beam, your team's best event. What are your thoughts as you look ahead to that, uh, that rotation? Well, you know, it's again, similar to bars. You need to just relax, stay in the moment, uh, not rush things and finish each skill. And so, um, you know, they're confident over there and hopefully that continues on through the last rotation. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Laura. Yeah, we got a great one here. Oklahoma, UCLA are at the top, but four teams battling it out for that final spot if they could advance to the final. Welcome back to St. Louis after three rotations. Here are the scores by 25 thousandths of a point. UCLA has the lead, Oklahoma in second. Denver, Washington, Utah, extremely close. Those teams are separated by just .05. Utah is just .05 behind Denver and Washington. A huge battle for the potential third spot. Chase Caps was outstanding on ball. She absolutely was, especially when we see her bounce out of the floor exercise, but come back and just nail this vault as well as she has done all season long. That's huge. Utah showed some nerves on bars on those handstands, legs apart, just not quite as sharp as they needed to be. So it's keeping it close. Carly had a good routine going. Perfect distance from the bar on the release move. Few little toe issues, but this was the big one. Unfortunately, she missed the release point, slung that dismount out. Bailey Rowe came back strong, but again, I just saw some nerves. It got to him a little bit on this event. A 
unfortunately started off the UCLA rotation on balance beam here with a fall in that second position, but Peng Peng Lee just showed off her extraordinary balance beam work, unique style, unique difficulty, and a major save here. <laughs> Many gymnasts would have been off the balance beam. And with ice water in her veins and just near perfection on all of her elements. Tyler well, Ross at 99625. Huge. Exactly what they needed. Denver consistent throughout. So wonderful to see this team continue the dream season they've had so far getting here to the Nationals. And they are competing, they putting are. it out there. Young freshman Maddie Carr within 98875. So rotation four when we come back to St. Louis. Don't go away. Our next MLS match on ESPN is tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be in Chester, PA for the union hosting David Villa and NYCFC. Major League Soccer presented by Audi. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Let's update you on the scores here in semifinal one at the national championships. UCLA, Oklahoma, Denver, Washington, Utah in fifth. They had tight scores on the vault in the first rotation and are trying to fight their way back into contention. For more, let's go to Laura. Well, yeah, Bart, this Utah team certainly knows that they need to get back into contention with a really good beam rotation here. And after some struggles on the beam at last year's NCAAs, Bailey Rowe told me that they consider themselves a beam team now. They've worked really hard all year long to feel that way. That said, they say their secret weapon is a podium beam that they actually put up. Washington's on the floor. Maddie Stover leads off the Red Rocks here. And this is a critical routine for them. Not only because it's the leadoff routine, she missed her series at the regionals. And the ability of an athlete to just put anything like that behind them completely, focus, stay in the moment on this event. Very, very nice move there. Kept those arms moving to connect those two elements very smoothly. Maddie Stover, the junior from Fullerton, California, is one of the team co-captains, all Pac-12 on team. Slight deduction there. She lifted her foot off to correct a balance issue. What we can't see happen here is any type of panic set in with this team. This is an event they can do well. They just have to stay calm and aggressive. Megan Marsden happy with that leadoff performance. Such a clutch routine. She's trying to get the Utah fans into the spirit of today's semifinal action. Mary Jacobson now, Oregon State on bars. Madeline Gardner started them off with a 9 7 8 7 5. Very good rhythm so far, no rushing. Nice to see her hitting the handstand. Little over rotation on her double front. Nicole Addison on vault for Denver. Score in for Scow is a 9-7-5 in their leadoff. There's a full little hop there. You can really see the fight in these gymnasts, though. They are, from the very start of an event, the very start of the vault, really focused on doing their absolute best in this environment. Keep in mind, we're showing you the average scores in the lower right-hand portion of your screen when we're full screen. And I think the important thing to note there is since there are Six teams competing on four events. Not everybody 
is doing that has done the same number of performances. So the reason we're using, showing the team average scores is just give you a relative perspective of how they're averaging. Because if it were just up to team total scores, two teams are on a bye and they're marking no scores during this particular rotation. This is the best way we can keep you up to speed on how these teams compare head to head. As their coach, Elise Ray said, she is so proud of this team. They are showing really remarkable composure here at the Nationals. Sure, they are nervous, but they are handling them so well, those nerves. For every tenth of a point they're gonna earn here. First time in 19 years that Washington has competed in the NCAA championships under first year Elise Ray. Great job for them. Okay, back over to the vault now. Maddie Stover had a 985. Julia Ross. Good fight on that landing as well. A little hop, a little slide hop back on the landing. Excuse me, I mispronounced that. Nicole Addison, a 9775. So the scores have been typically a little bit tight and low on vault, really from the start. That's how Utah started the meet and that is what they're trying to overcome. And actually it's because they are taking the deductions that need to be taken. They are looking at the amplitude. I think they're even seeing the form onto the table in that pre-flight, the height and distance. Julia Ross had a 9-8. The Women's NCAA Gymnastics Championship continues tomorrow with the Super 6 Team Championship. Coverage continues at 9 Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the 90 NCAA Championship, log on to NCAA.com. to Utah on beam. Maddie Stover over there had a season high 985 in a very clutch opening rotation. And McKenna Merrill, a career high 99. Nine. So Utah, superb here. Came up huge in that second spot in the lineup. Missy Ryan Stetler is so beautiful on this event. Very smooth, elegant. Shows off those long lines, high toe. Like to see just a little bit more height on those leaps and jumps. She's a freshman from Brick, New Jersey, with her club training at North Stars Gymnastics. You see just a little bit of nerves creeping in right there on those dance steps. Nice balance and flexibility move. Goes up on high toe. Megan Morrison said she often reminds her of former great All-American Teresa. Kulikowski, who competed for Utah several years ago. Very clean routine. Just gave away a tiny bit on that landing, just sliding back. Moments ago, Maddie Carr for Denver on vault. Julia Ross before her had a 9-8. One of the few doing a one and a half twist for her team, and oh. boy, did she nail it. That is coming up big. The young freshman, Maddie Carr, contributing a great deal in her first year for Denver. 9.875, her score. Denver doing exactly what they need to do to stay in the game here. Their scores are consistent across the board. Bart, it's the interesting thing about gymnastics. There is no defense, obviously. It's all about what you do in your routine and how you perform it in that moment. You can't change that. You just have to step up in terms of how you perform it. Katie Anna McMillan now. She's coming off a score of 9-4-5 from Singley. McKenna Singley. So there is a score that they hope to replace. The other scores are all in that mid to high Nine seven. Nice handstand there at the end. Just a few little toe issues throughout the routine. Beautiful double layout. Too bad she couldn't get the landing, but it was pretty in the air. 
Oregon State has been quite consistent this year, and that's why they have only counted two falls in the regular season, one on beam and one on bar, so that has really kept them in the game. Meanwhile, back over at beam, Utah has been lights out. Scores 9.85 for Stova. Merrill had a 9.9 career high. Missy Ryan Stantler, 9.7875. And here we go with the superstar freshman alternate to the 2016 Olympic team in Rio. I guess they call them replacement athletes now. And Bart, it's not just the, the difficult element she does. That's spectacular. We love to see her really keep that level of difficulty from elite into college. But something that makes her so unique, she is so competitive in the moment. I mean, she really just strives to win. And not just the competition, but win the routine. Like, this is going to be the best. She first signed at Utah in 2014 that deferred because she wanted to try to make that 2016 Olympic team. See how aggressive she is on the landing. She's not giving away anything that she doesn't have to. And I will say this, she has improved on her form after coming to college. It's something that people question whether because she, Sure, she could do crazy difficulty, but was she going to clean up the form, get straight legs, pointed toes, and posture? And she has worked so hard recognizing that it's all about that in college. She's ranked second in the all-around to Maggie Nichols from Oklahoma. There's lots of difficulty, like that combination. Tiny balance check there. You may see performers with straighter legs or more pointed toes, but very few attack the routines as aggressively and competitively as Michaela Skinner. And she's gonna top it off with a difficult double top. Oh, and look at that, she found the landing. Her. How exciting. She completely drilled that double backflip at the end. She is so tough when she needs to be. Slightly off, but she just adjusted the way she has that finishing position where her arms are to adjust for the balance, and then just attacks the landing on the double back. So moments ago for Oregon State, Erica Alfiero on bars after Katiana had a 9-7-3-5. So they're trying to replace the score of 9-4-5 from earlier in the rotation. Look at the form here. Straight legs, pointed toes, even on the pirouetting moves. She locks those feet together. That doesn't give the judges any opportunity to take those little quarter tenths or half tenths of a point off. Might have been a tad short on that last handstand. Everything else has been spot on. Great double layout. What a fine routine. And that score of a 98875 for Alfiero will replace the 945, a clutch team performance there. Just love the form. Even on her giant swings as she swings through the bottom, so many gymnasts, legs go flying out to the side. She keeps them together. Bailey Rowe on the beam now for Utah, coming off of Michaela Skinner. Her score in now, 9-9-1-2-5. This is so far an outstanding event for the Red Rocks. And Bailey has been having a terrific season. Very exciting to watch in competition. She talks to herself on balance beam. And apparently she listens to herself too. She really focuses in and does everything as well as she possibly can. She has a few little form issues, but what a nice triple sear, quadruple actually. <laughs> she has back hands and back hands and lay out into the beat jump. Talked about how several of these teams have outstanding 
duos of all-around performers for Utah. It's Bailey Rowe and Michaela Skinner. Typically the big scores towards the end of the lineup. He's a senior from Federal Way, Washington. The only senior on the team. Co-captain along with Maddie Stover. It's a, an extremely solid routine. Few little foreign things with the feet and legs, but wow, she attacked the routine, nailed the routine, and then fought so hard to glue those toes to the mat on the dismount. So five hit routines for Utah. Moments ago for Washington on the floor, Alexandra Yakalis. And they have one low score they would like to drop on this event. Nice job staying in bounds. Look back to one and a half twist punch front. Nice combination pass in the middle. He's one of three seniors on this team. Five freshmen, so Elise Ray very excited about the youngsters that she has to work with. I really like the way they do their leaps on floor exercise. I can tell who their coach is. Elise Ray paid very close attention to detail in her own gymnastics, the form, the execution. Really trying to perfect every step, every element. See the scoring update there. Bailey Rose score in on the beam for Utah. 9-8-7-5. Terrific lift into that double back. Very nice finish. Shannon McNatt, the final performer for the Red Rocks on the beam. Five. Terrific performances so far. This is exactly what they hope to be in this moment. They have waited to get back on the balance beam on this stage. And they worked all season long to become the beam team they knew they could be and wanted to be last year. This will make all the difference in the world. Their first two events, they were not quite as sharp as they needed to be. Typically a smaller team than some of the other rosters. And so Megan Marsden said, you know, we are always dealing with a little bit of a lack of depth issue. But at the midpoint in the season after a loss to Oregon State, it seemed like it recentered their focus. And they have been very intense since then. I can only imagine how great this feels for this team, for this coach, Megan Marsden. I watched her face sink last year uh -huh. when they melted down on balance beam. This has got to be so rewarding, so wonderful. If the Utah Red Rocks hope to advance through to the Super Six final tomorrow night, they needed these performances Absolutely. here. Absolutely. They were currently in fifth place. Only the top three advance. Gutsy performances for Utah on the beam. In this, the fourth rotation out of six. You can see Megan Marsden, a sense of excitement and probably a little bit of relief. Seems like every team, once they get past beam, can kind of just take a deep breath. At least until they think about their next <laughs> event and then they have to start focusing again. The score to replace is Ryan Statler's 97875. The high score there is Skinner's 99125. And of course, McKenna Merrill had a career high 99 in the second spot. Great to see these happy, relaxed faces. To have done your job on this event, and, and I, I felt the pressure they were under as they walked over to Balance Beam. They knew they weren't quite what they needed to be on vault and bars. 
And the score is just in now. 9-8-5 the score for Shannon McNatt. So a superb rotation on beam in the fourth rotation. And that puts them currently in third place for the moment. So up from fifth after the previous rotation. Haley Burleson will close it out for us on floor for Washington. And she uses such great technique to get that lift off the floor. She's not a power packed tumbler, but her technique really lifts her off the floor. This was moments ago coming after a strong and consistent rotation on floor. The low score for Duranchik is a 9-5-6-2-5, the one they want to replace. But all the other scores are in a respectable 9-8-2-5 to 9-8-8-7-5 range. Washington doing a great job today. Fantastic job. The back one and a half was high enough. The front layout was a little bit low. Beautiful flexibility and stretch. Really shows off her strengths in this routine. Watch the lift out of the round off back handspring. She gets such good arm lift. Core lift right here. Very high, two and a half twist. All done with technique, well done. So great to have Washington back after 19 years to the national championships. 9-8-7-5, the score for Burleson and their anchor performance. Really nice job there. They replaced the 9-5-6-2-5 and a respectable team score in the fourth rotation for the Huskies. That rotation was all about Utah on the beam. What a big rotation for them. That puts them back in contention in this team battle. Utah was fifth coming into this rotation. And with some gutsy performances on beam, it appears that Utah has worked their way up to third. Based on average scores, UCLA is the leader, Oklahoma second, Utah is in third. And that really was an indication of capitalizing on the moment. They had an opportunity on beam. Instead of feeling the pressure that they gave points away on the previous two events, they came over there and just rocked it on balance beam. Okay, let's go down to Laura Rutledge, who's with Miss Val. All right, thanks, Bart. And Coach, a gutsy performance from Caitlin Ohashi, who's dealing with the ankle injury on beam. What would you say about the way that your team performed on beam? You know, when we got through with beam, uh, they huddled up, and one of our athletes, Nikki Shapiro, just said, you guys, as far as rallying and being together as a team and believing in each other, we are world class. And it's like, mm, enough said. I didn't need to say anything more after that. That's nice when you don't really have to say anything because your players do it for you. You know what? It's so cool. It's like I get to the point where I say, you guys, if we get to the national championships and I'm bored and I can just have fun, you know, we know, I know I've done my job. And so it's so great having them just, I love it when they huddle up and I'm still trying to get to the huddle and they've just taken over. You head to floor next. Yes. What would you say about this team and what you need out of them on floor? We're going to light it up. We're going to have a party. It's obviously our most fun event and it's going to be a dance party and I just think that they're going to bring it and they're going to have a great time. What did you see out of them when they came out of the locker room after the bye? Just now? Yeah. Uh, a bit of more relaxed. Yeah, you know, going into starting on bars and beam, it was, they were in a really good place, but they weren't just relaxed and having fun and I think it took Caitlin having the little dance party with Corey up on the podium before beam for them to go, oh yeah, let's just do what we do best and have fun. Dance parties always help, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Laura and Miss Val. Okay, when after the break, Laura will speak to the head coach of the undefeated Oklahoma Sooners, K.J. Kindler, when we come back.
serious? Hey, Mama, you're gonna be an abuela. <laughs> yeah, this is how she tells me. <laughs> The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Let's take a look at the average scores after four of six rotations. You'll note there that UCLA and Oklahoma were on buys in the previous rotation. Well, they are our leaders actually based on average. It's UCLA, Oklahoma, Utah is in third and they climbed up from fifth, Washington fourth, Denver fifth and Oregon State in terms of average scores. The reason we do this, of course, once again, is because not everybody has done the same number of rotations. So this is the only way we can compare the teams apples to apples. All right, let's go down to Laura Rutledge. She's with OU's KJ Kindler. Thanks, Bart. And KJ, you have very high expectations for your team. How would you describe the way that they have competed so far? I think they're a little nervy right now, you know, shaking out the, the jitters. So we're seeing some really great things and then some not so great things. We just got to get a little more even keeled right now. How can you get more even keeled as you head to bars? <laughs> well, we need to relax. We relaxed on the bye. You just kind of got to chill a little bit and not put so much emphasis on the moment. So that's what we're trying to do. What did they do to relax during the bye? They dance. They dance in the locker room, tell jokes, things like that. Yeah. Do you tell any jokes? No. <laughs> I don't even know any jokes. Bart knows jokes, right, Bart? <laughs> okay. Two gymnasts oh, walk into a bar. Oh, no. Yes. Okay. All right. All, right. <laughs> All right. When we come back, it'll be the fifth rotation. It's going to be great. Don't go away. What we do every night is like something out of a strange dream, except that the next morning, it all makes sense. To power global e-commerce, FedEx networks are massive, far-reaching, and yes, a little magical. FedEx.com slash dream. Whether it's a pick and roll or home and auto, State Farm knows the power of having the right combination. The question is, do you? Go to therightcombination.com to find lockers in your area and online. How many feet from the ground is a regulation basketball hoop? <laughs> that is correct! Crack the right combination and you could unlock prizes, like a chance to win a trip to All-Star Saturday night. Here to help life go right. Stay Farm. Welcome back to the 2017 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship after four of six rotations. Here are the team averages. Once again, we do this because not everybody's competed the same number of rotations. UCLA and Oklahoma on a bye in the last rotation. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the previous rotation, Kathy. Freshman Maddie Carr is Still doing a great job. continue to be so impressed with this young team and Maddie Carr in particular just really focused in on doing everything as well as possible. Perfect form marks this routine. Straight legs, pointed toes. Judges love that. And most important, they can't pick up their pencil and take a deduction. The story in that rotation was Utah on the beam. McKenna Merrill started them off. Just a fabulous routine in this spot in the lineup. Was so aggressive, so determined, kept the momentum going for this beam team and Michaela Skinner just so competitive. Ice water in her veins, attacks every skill, including one of the more difficult dismounts off balance beam, <laughs> nails it. And Bailey Rowe came through with a 9875 of her own. She was just so tough. She's not perfectly clean, but did a triple series and focused from start to finish to help Utah really be the beam team from start to finish, one through six. Set for the fifth rotation. Washington on the vault, Oklahoma goes to the bars, Oregon State on beam, UCLA on the floor.
with scores this tight, you really want to see them obviously focus on the details, but most important, stay calm, stay in the moment, not get ahead of themselves. Chase Caps up for the Sooners in leadoff spot on bar. She's and ranked Bart, third in the all-around in the country. They are spectacular on this event because of their form and execution. They have such tight bodies, straight body swing. And it's not just the position when they get to the handstand, it's how they get there. Very, very smooth. Te oh, why take that mm. step? Oh, had it right there. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Well, just before this bars rotation for Oklahoma, assistant coach Tom Haley called his lineup together and he said, we've got to relax. We have to take this as slow as we can and hit those handstands and show our training, show our work. KJ Kindler told us she felt this team was a little nervy. Chase Caps ended that little huddle with a let's go do what we do. The Sooners since the second week of the season have been ranked number one. And they were at times when they were ranked number one on all four apparatus. So they have the depth and they have the polish. Uh, one of the strongest Sooner teams we've seen. Two things that I noticed. They, they have no, shown no vulnerability on any event. They're just strong across all four events. But they haven't been pressured. Nobody's put pressure on them yet. So seeing them even feel some nerves, which they are feeling some nerves. Even KJ said it. She sensed it. But this is good. That's why semifinals are so important. Work through those things. Of course, a lot of us are anticipating a potential showdown with the Oklahoma Sooners and number two LSU in tomorrow night's Super Six Finals here in St. Louis. About the midway point in the season, they met here in a quadrangular meet in St. Louis. And uh, Oklahoma ended up on top in that matchup. Stephanie Couture now on bars. The score for Chase Caps a 9-8-2-5. Very sharp on this event so far. You can see they really listen to that instruction. Stay calm, don't get ahead of yourself, don't rush. That's how you stick landings. You can't rush and think too soon about the stick. You gotta go big on the dismount, hit the release point at the right time, get the toes up, hips up, then see the landing and finish it. Stephanie Couture, the junior from Phoenix from the same gym as Michaela Skinner of Utah. Haley Roy on vault for Washington. Oh, nice to see a different vault, a Sukahara vault with half twist. Of course, it's the traditional entry, no round off onto the board. Madison Kopiak before her, a 9.7625. That vault start value is a 9.95. Nine There is Elise Ray. I wonder how many of the gymnasts are so young when Elise was competing. They, they, several gymnasts in this competition are doing rays in their <laughs> routines. And they're like, wow, cool, like, you wow, it. That's a person? <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. Once again, it's a four ring circus here. We're in the fifth rotation. Caitlin Ohashi starting on floor exercise. Great to see her in the event. It was questionable. She turned her ankle the day after regionals. Brenna Dow for the Sooners on bars. She is so aggressive on this event. Watch her release move. There is a ray. There is a ray. <laughs> Very well done. Beautiful technique on those toe on toe offs. Stephanie Couture, by the way, had a 9-9 in the second spot for the Sooners. Beautifully straight legs, toe point. Excellent precision in that routine. Oh, <laughs> just can't quite get the stick. You mentioned the polish. The toe point on the Sooners is even, really special. I, I like that you said toe point. She kept the toe point even in the reverse hack. Showing good amplitude and height over the bar. Look how beautifully she keeps those legs together and just oh, has to take that little half step. That is certainly a trademark of the Sooners program is that polish and attention to detail. Moments ago on the ball here in this particular rotation, 9-8-2-5 with the score for Jocelyn Goings.
Nicole Lehrman now for the Sooners. Brenna Dowell had a 9-8-6-2-5. Lehrman scored a 10 this year during the regular season. And it is because of her impeccable form. Really a beautifully placed Jaeger front there too. I love when they make that regress, their arms are stretched. Look how straight her body is on the transition to the handstand, a low bar. Some ways she flies under the radar of some of the more famous gymnasts on this team, but look at what she contributes. And toes pointed throughout the entire dismount. Full twisting double back and they never once unpointed. Nyla Ross on the floor. We just got the fingers crossed from Miss Val because Kyla is rarely in the floor lineup, but it, they are so lacking depth, they needed to put her in, and they made that decision just today. And it's not because she's, she's so pretty on this event, so clean, great precision on her tumbling. It's the final tumbling pass that is a big question mark. She's competed twice on this event and fallen both times on that last pass. Cute little ponytail move there. She has the high scores of the day on bars, a 995, and on being a 99625. So she has really done her part for the team, but this is where they have to expect a clutch routine from this young lady who is rarely in the lineup. Those leaps and jumps lack just a little bit of energy, so I know she's probably conserving right here, building up the energy for this. Final tumbling pass. This is the one they are all holding their breath on. It's a back one and a half twist to a front layout. She has to take it to her feet. A little bit tight over on bars because during warm-ups they were laughing, they were dancing, and swinging impeccable bars. Just a moment ago, Alexandra Yakalis now for Washington on ball. This is so great to see this team just rise to the occasion. Look at all the stuck landings we've seen on the vault. Were they the biggest vaults in the competition? Were they high and far? Not necessarily, but they are doing everything that they have in this moment. Great to see. Of course, their first year head coach, Elise Ray, former All-American at Michigan, in charge of that program at Washington, doing a nice job. Here is Maggie Nichols. You see her bars average. She scored the gym slam this year. She scored a perfect 10 on each of the four apparatus, on a couple of them that she scored it twice. She can be so beautiful and smooth on this event. Very light. Watch the transition. I love that she moves, works out of the back salto down. Impeccable form. Excellent job. Legs perfectly together. Oh. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous routine. And notice when she made that landing. All she did was shift the one foot into almost a ballet position to present to the judge. Look at that. Legs together. Boom. And the stage is set for another big score because Nicole Lehrman's score was a 9.95. Mackenzie Wofford, a 9.8625. Katura 9.9. We're joining Angie Sipra now on floor. Kyla Ross gets a 9.825. What a clutch performance for the Bruins. And this is one of the most fun routines done in college gymnastics. The choreography is so entertaining, so unique, original. Stayed in oh, bounds. way to go. Did not, oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hangs up the phone. <laughs> oh, I love it. They call that the iPhone oh. routine. And typical of Miss Val, she is one of the first coaches to engage the audience and yeah. play around with the choreography Absolutely. at a level that we've never seen Early before. Early in the routine, you hear the phone ring and she picks it up, answers it, and starts looking in the audience. Who's, who's calling me while I'm doing my floor routine? <laughs> she dialed in a good one, though, and they needed it here. Danny DeSaints now on beam. 
Sylvia Colusi Palaev had a 9-9, a career high. Really good they job have, for Oregon State on They have on nice team. marks. So far, the score is looking really good. There's a 9-7-8-7-5, a 9-8, a 9-9, and a 9-8-6-2-5 from Katiana McMillan. So Oregon State also really, really impressive today. Yes. Interesting that all of the teams are settling down a little bit in this rotation. Good to see. They're kind of taking control of the nerves, relaxing, and having a little bit more fun. Trusting their training, and it's really showing in the routines. This is a team with six seniors. And they had quite a bit of experience at this level. Excellent work. You know, it's really what you want to see because you want to see the teams walk off the floor after their session saying, I did everything possible. We handled the nerves. We worked together as a team. We had each other's backs. We shared the pressure. And the score just came in for Maggie Nichols on bars, a 9-9-5 as we set up Madison Koshin now for UCLA on floor. Andy Cipra before her, a 9-9-2-5, a season high, and what a time to get it. She opened really well here, Madison Koshin, with a front double twist. Excellent control. It's often a difficult pass to land. It's the back one and a half to a front one and a half. She has one of the sweetest smiles <laughs> in gymnastics. <laughs> and she's actually learning to smile in her floor routine, flirt a little bit with the audience and her teammates off on the side. It's quite not a bit different from the international elite world, yes, isn't it? It did not come naturally at first. We're talking just about nine months ago. She's on that team in Rio. She contributed huge routines on the bars to get an individual medal and contribute to the team gold medal performance. But Kalita Gymnastics is quite a bit different. Excellent landing. One of the best landings of the pike double so far on this bouncy floor. Good control. Nice job. The rules in Kalita Gymnastics are different than the international rules. Less of an emphasis on difficulty. Polish is required, and of course, you really have to sell these floor routines to the judge and to the fans. Absolutely. That said, the judges have a huge task because there are routines that have more difficulty in them. There are routines that are more technically superior. There are some that are cleaner, more artistic. You have to be able to assess all of that, all within a 10.0 system. <laughs> Laura Rutledge has more on Madison Koshin. Yeah, guys, Madison told me that she actually loves every single event on podium. She said, look, I'm exhausted. This helps my body a little bit, especially on floor with the bouncier floor. We just saw the great landing from her. And by the way, when it comes to that exhaustion, after the Olympics, she only took four days off to spend with her family. Then she went on a world tour with the final five, then went straight to school. So she really has been going, going, going since Rio. Good point, Laura. And, you know, some of these athletes, uh they basically turn pro like Simone Biles. If they accept money for doing those professional tours, they'll lose their NCAA eligibility. But she stayed with her teammates for much of the tour, and uh, yet she turned down the money so that she could have this experience at the NCAA collegiate level. And I'm sure she's happy about that. Madeline Gardner now coming after Danielle De Saints 98875. And an excellent balance beam worker, regular season All-American on this event, well-deserved. You know, some athletes do balance beam, some truly perform it, and some are just natural beamers. They're so comfortable. By the way, the score just in for Madison Koshin, 99375. UCLA doing outstanding in a crucial event for them on floor. And Oregon State solid all day long as we're seeing here on beam from yes. Madeline Gardner. And this routine is just as smooth as creamy butter. It is so effortless. The landings are soft. 
I like seeing the confidence and composure and, very, and stretch, nice posture throughout the whole routine. Excellent work. Gardner, one of the all-arounders for Oregon State, along with Katiana McMillan. That's that one-two punch in the all-around that is uh, almost irreplaceable. Her score is in 9-9-1-2-5, and moments ago, Hallie Mosset took to the floor. Shows her flexibility right off the bat. This is a whip back instead of the back handsprings into a double back. Remember we saw Hallie have some trouble on balance beam, had a fall there. She is just gorgeous on this event and she <laughs> can turn on an inner Beyonce here and just really captivate an audience. I love what Miss Val says. She says, well, why be a second rate Beyonce, why don't you be a first-rate Ali Mosette? Exactly. <laughs> you'll see, it's not just the choreography. Watch her facial expression. Everything matches the choreography and the character of the routine. It's truly a total performance. The floor exercise to them is a 40 by 40 stage, it essentially. Is a stage. Oh, wow, nice. look at her push through that back handspring nice to get technique. the height for that pike double back. She is trying to be perfect on all her leaps, her jumps. She is going for broke. And she's coming after a 99375 for Koshin and two season highs for Ross and Sipra. Big question marks coming into today. Would UCLA have a respectable floor lineup? Well, they've answered that resoundingly. What a job under pressure. Tonight on 10.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, catch Sports Center at night with Stan and Neil. They'll have full breakdown of the NHL playoff games, MLB's best, NBA playoff first round previews, and everything else. Sports Center at night. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Ali Mosette's score is in a 9-9-2-5 for the Bruins on that clutch performance. All right, let's go down to Laura. All right, thank you so much. And Tom, when you think about the way that your team was able to bounce back for an excellent beam rotation, what goes through your mind? Well, we were really impressed with them. We thought they had a lot of fight and a lot of resolve. Um, definitely a little tight on the first two events, but when they came back strong like that on beam, we're all excited. Yeah, how do you think this team's work on beam throughout this year prepared them for that moment when their backs were up against the wall? You know, the, we, we told them to stay kind of in their Utah bubble and uh, to come out here. Our main goal was to just come out here and hit 24 routines and then see where that takes us. So now you head to floor, an event where this team has the potential to put up big scores. What do you hope for them? You know, we just want them to be themselves and go out there and do their normal things that they usually do in the gym. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing if we can hit six more, six more uh, routines. The fans in here for Utah are pretty loud. What would you say about the fan support that this team garners year in and year out? It's the best in the world. <laughs> we love our fans. And uh, it's just so passionate. And for them to travel across the country like this and show up to a, a morning session, basically, we're just so excited and we love our fans. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lauren. Mark. Thank you, Laura. And let's take a look at the scores. There are the Red Rocks fans who traveled from Salt Lake to cheer on their team. And boy, they've built a huge fan base out there. Here are the scores after five rotations, the final rotation when we come back. Any guy can catch a ride, but only you can take her on a journey. You got something. Own it and smell great with new Axe U, a unique masculine fragrance. I believe computers are important in design, but it's the human touch that creates design with feeling, creating a form that appeals to your heart. 
Why are we so passionate about perfecting designs by hand? Because driving matters. Introducing the all-new Mazda CX-5. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. Here is where we stand after five of six rotations. And you can see Washington and Oregon State have completed their semifinal competition. Washington, 196.5625. Oregon State, 196.3625. Two tenths of a point separating those teams. The four remaining teams in that list there, UCLA, Oklahoma, Utah, and Denver, are yet to compete in this sixth and final rotation. Take a look at the highlights from rotation five. Washington well, struggled a little bit on ball. And only because they don't have big, gigantic, high-flying vaults. She had issues on that landing. Most of the others, though, stuck the landings on their vault. They just don't have the height and the distance some, of some of the other vaulters. And the scores in general have been low on vaulting, so every team has ended up a little behind after coming through that rotation. And this was an event for UCLA that was a question mark. They had some injuries. They had to work around. They turned it into a dance party, added some great tumbling and finished very, very strong with Madison Koshin, who really controlled that front double twist. All of her landings were so good. And Mossett, what can you say? She entertained the entire crowd with great choreography, high-flying tumbling, controlled on the landing, really put it all together for UCLA to finish strong on floor exercise. And Oklahoma, impeccable technique and form, were superb on this event. They settled in nicely, handled their nerves, came up with some stuck landings. So great amplitude on the release moves. This was what people expect to see from Oklahoma. So well prepared to perform. And Maggie Nichols was as patient as could be throughout this routine, got into a beautiful rhythm, showed excellent form and finesse on the landing. And she has a 9.95 along with Nicole Lehrman's there. So the final rotation, the stage is set for a thriller here in St. Louis, don't go away. Hi, thanks for coming. This year, Chevy received more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than any other car brand. I'm very, very impressed. Did I mention they received more of them last year, too? Look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. And the year before that. Oh, wow. And the year before that. Oh, 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 oh. It keeps going. In fact, Chevy has received more J.D. Power Awards for Initial Quality than any other car company four years in a row. I am speechless. Impressive. Chevy stepping up their game. There's nothing quite as magical as staying at a Disney Resort hotel. So imagine complimentary rides to and from the park, even extra time with your family in the park. And this summer, you can save up to 25% on rooms at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels. So if you're not staying here, just think what you might be missing. Apocalyptic, hip hop, acoustic, eclectic musings with electric music. Can I make a groove? Make it move, make a move with the groove. Make it who it, make it who, make that who it. Okay, the stage is set for the final rotation here in St. Louis. Which three teams will advance to the Super 6 final? The NBA playoffs begin on ABC and ESPN with four first round games, a quadruple header Saturday starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. Our coverage ships off at 2.30 on ABC with NBA Countdown presented by Straight Talk Wireless. And all the games are available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Okay, Kathy Johnson-Clark, well, 
here we are now. The final rotation, six teams battling it out. Two teams are done. Both Washington and Oregon State are essentially in the clubhouse as leaders. But UCLA, Oklahoma, Utah, and Denver yet to complete their competition. And it's going to come down to literally tenths and even hundreds of a point as to see which teams advance through to tomorrow night's Super 6 final. This rotation, Utah's on the floor, Oklahoma on the beam, Denver's on the bars, and UCLA's on the vol. This is one of Utah's highest scoring events. So if they can perform and get control on the landings, no steps out of bounds, they can put up a big score here. Angie Sipra from UCLA also starting her vault. Uh, UCLA needs some clutch performances here because vault has typically been a tightly scored event, and this is the one they're finishing on. They need some good landings, and that's a good one. Not perfect, but it was so good. Very clean vault. This has been a rather inconsistent event for UCLA during the regular season, so they'll need to be strong if they hope to advance through. Pac-12 champions, Utah. Not a terribly deep team, but they are typically quite consistent and reliable. And the one benefit they have, because they have such sellout crowds for all of their home meets, they have such experience performing big to huge arenas. It's exactly what's needed here. Macy Roberts, the sophomore from Tennessee, is a transfer from Maryland. He has really been embraced by the team because of her drive to succeed at Utah. They said she's sort of a Rudy to their team, and uh, everyone's happy for her, and she is solid in that leadoff spot. Madison Koshin set to vault for UCLA. Angie Sipra, 9-8. Three, seven, five. And, and this is an event for them. It's, it's not one of their maximize events, so they really need to stick landings. They're only going to perform two 10 0 start value vaults. The other are 995. They have to be as perfect as they can be. Oh, nice. Just <laughs> like that. That's as well as she can do <laughs> no that kidding. ball. As I said, so no deduction on the landing. It could be a little bit higher, a little bit bigger, just in terms of the overall dynamics and amplitude. But watch the form, even in slow motion. Little leg separation there. As I said, you'd like her to be a little bit higher, a little bit farther from the table. But wow, look at the landing. You don't give anything away there. It's an advantage. This is an event where UCLA has traditionally been a little bit weak on the landing. So impressive start with the first two vaults. Missy Reinstatler now on floor for Utah. 9-8-5 was the score for Macy Roberts in the leadoff spot. And this is one of the prettiest floor routines you'll see in the competition. Very elegant. Beautifully done to the music. Just a freshman from New Jersey. Stayed in bounds, but took those steps back. Judges are really looking for the control on two feet before they step into the lunge, and certainly no more than one step back. You mentioned going out of bounds. I misspoke earlier. I thought that uh, Natalie Brown might have gone out of bounds on floor exercise for the Sooner. She did not, so we she, were corrected. They had only one out of bounds there. She had eyeballs on her toes. She did not step over that <laughs> line. I told you that. <laughs> yes, dear. Lovely, lovely routine. They might take a tiny bit on the landing and that pike double back, just a little jarring 
of the landing, but nothing bad. Just love the performance. It's interesting the range of athletes and talent they have on that team from that lovely kind of lyrical performance to the power craziness of the final performer, Michaela Skinner, in their rotation. This is Poole Hall for UCLA just moments ago. Doing a one and a half. Wow, oh. fought so hard. These are better landings than I've seen from UCLA all season long. Yeah, you can see they are excited because they have a 9-8-3-7-5 and 9-8-7-5. And as we noted earlier, scores have generally been a little bit low on vault. So UCLA now a 9-8-2-5 for Napuolani Hall. They call her, call her Pua. Once they got into that sort of party on the sidelines things, it seemed like UCLA really loosened up, didn't it? They did. And sometimes that can go awry because if you get too amped up on vault, you overdo things. Um, so you really need to find that balance. Alicia Hano. Back in the lineup here as of Pac 12s. And boy, I'm so, I'm sure they're glad to have her back in the lineup. Shows a lot of control in that ball. Good, clean form. Gets congratulations from Randy Lane, who's been a longtime coach at UCLA. UCLA six times has won the national championship. So four very nice vaults in this rotation for the Bruins when they need it most. They're encouraging each other. I think Kyla Ross will be next on vault for UCLA. Now she has a really clean, uniquely clean vault. She has good amplitude. She's only doing the full twist, trying to maximize her score by being perfect, not with the start value. Once again, it's a four ring circus down in your bottom left corner. Stephanie Couture on beam for Oklahoma. 9-9-2-5 was the score for Nicole Lehrman before her, and Charity Jones led them off with a 9-8-5. And Oklahoma has always been superb on balance beam. They are so well trained on this event. Their consistency is extraordinary. The score in for Hano for UCLA, a season high 9-8-6-2-5. And that brings up Kyla Ross. Five-time world medalist, Olympic medalist, and gold medalist at that. Wow, look at the block off the table. It was actually a better vault than most of the vaults we've seen from her teammates, but she has the hop back, so they'll have to deduct for that landing, but do they give anything Take a look for at this technique, Kathy. It's superb. Look at that. I mean, you can see her really push off the table. Five feet at the hips, above the table. She saw the landing, usually is so good at getting it. Hopped back, they'll take a deduction for that. But the rest of the vault was so nice. Isla Ross ended up doing the all-around today. They weren't quite sure she was gonna do that. And now she's in contention for an all-around championship because today, not only are we advancing teams to the Super Six final, but we are determining individual champions in the all-around and each individual event at these national championships. Great start for Denver on the uneven bars. This is an event they're ranked eight nationally. They're coming off a uh, fall from Leah Lamont. She fell twice. So Claire Kern for Denver had a 9.8625, but their second performer for Denver on the bars, Leah Lamont, a 8.1125. Tiffany Lewis on the floor. She's coming off of McKenna Merrill's 9-9. Utah just fabulous here. Balance beam. Strong finish for Lewis. 
Good fight on that landing. It looked as if her yes. knees almost were going to buckle, yeah. but she hung in there. Nicely done for the Red Rocks. Four outstanding routines so far. And there are two outstanding all-arounders coming up for Utah as we continue on being with Natalie Brown for the Sooners. Nice finish and save that one balance issue in the middle of the routine. <laughs> this is an event that uh, Oklahoma has just been year in and year out consistent on. KJ Kindler, I think he, she prides herself in picking athletes who are beamers, but she also constructs routines that are smart and super polished. And keeps the training interesting and different enough so it keeps them engaged and their brains working on balance beam, but, but is also very consistent in the way they train. In fact, when they go to beam, they get up on the beam, they don't get off during practice. Maddie Carr moments ago for Denver on bars. Sam Ogden before her had a 9.85. Remember, they're trying to replace the 8 oh, 1 1 2 5. Almost overbalanced that one handstand, but that's going for broke, going as hard as she can. You'd like to see that type of aggressive. If there's going to be a mistake, I would rather be at a mistake going all out than holding back. Nice position in the air on the double layout and great landing. What contributions this young freshman has made to this team. 9-8-7-5 for Maddie Carr. Bailey Rowe on floor for Utah. Tiffany Lewis score is in a 9-8-5. Utah loves performing on floor exercise. You can really see their personalities come out in the dance. You see in the background there, Maggie Nichols on the beam for the Oklahoma Sooners at the same time. This is how it looks if you're sitting in the stands. You're watching floor and beam, bars and ball. Maggie's series is a backhand from the out. Step out, wow. <laughs> that was really an uncanny adjustment that she made. She, you could tell she was off, but she just so subtly made the correction, minimized it. Somehow her back, and that is what team gymnastics is. But it's a shame when you've seen an athlete do so much all year long. And as a freshman problem. to be a yes. legitimate contender to win the all around title. Yes. And there it went. Kyla Ross from UCLA Currently the leader in the all-around with a 39-5-7-5. Kayla Skinner now will close it out for Utah on the floor. Bailey Rowe, 9-9-2-5 before her. So and Bart, if you saw her walk onto the floor, it just tells you all about Michaela Skinner. There is confidence. And what can you say about and this opening tumbling me. run? Double double. Wow. The amount of energy she brings to this routine is pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy, really. This is why she was such an important contributor to the U.S. teams at the World Championships over the last several years, because on events like floor and ball, nobody could out-tumble or out-difficulty her. You're right, she could do so much difficulty. That part of her score was just sky high. She could even take a few of the deductions for, you know, footwork or, or form in the leaps and jumps. She has worked hard on correcting those here for college. Nice to see. One and a half twist, two to a double twist. She's marking those positions at the end to really show off the fact that she has complete control on the landings. Uh-oh, almost lost her balance stepping into the corner. <laughs> You can do double <laughs> twisting, double back. Check this. Step out of bounds on a shimmy. Only a few do this in the beginning of the oh. routine. She handled that landing very well because it was a big step back. 
but she showed it in such a way it masked how large the step back was. Well done. <laughs> and she is getting her Utah fans on their feet. And they are <laughs> here in mass. They have big expectations at Utah. The last time they won the national team championship was way back in 1995. Do they have a team this year good enough to win? Even in slow motion, look how fast this is. Two flips and two twists. Ah, <laughs> what excitement these outstanding freshmen have brought to collegiate gymnastics this year. Michaela Skinner will help secure a berth in the Super Six final, so the results are official. Oklahoma, UCLA, and Utah have advanced to tomorrow night's Super Six final here in St. Louis. What a feeling when you have done exactly what you need to do to move. They settled down so well. Okay, so here is the story. Utah with a 197.05 will earn a berth into the Super Six final. Megan Marsden waiting for the results to be official along with her co-head coach, Tom Farden. Utah with a 197.05. UCLA just ahead of them by .45 gets second place today. And Oklahoma will win the session number one with a 197.725. So they win the first session, and our Laura Rutledge is with their coach, KJ Kindler. All right, thanks so much, Bart. And coach, the last time we talked before bars, you said you felt like your team was a little nervy. How did they settle in for the rest of this competition? Uh, I thought they hit bars really well. We got into a groove on our landings a little bit more. Same thing on beam, our first three nailing their landings right away. That gives a sense of calm, I think, to the rest of the lineup. So really glad how they finished. Maggie Nichols with an uncharacteristic fall. You were just talking to her over there. Yeah. What'd you say to her? I told her it was okay. You know, she's so hard on herself and, and we all are when we want something really badly. But, you know, I talked about tomorrow and that we have a different mission and none of us are disappointed in her and I think she feels a little better. <laughs> I bet she does. What is that mission for tomorrow? Um, obviously, we're trying to win a national championship, as I'm sure everyone in the session will be. What would you say about some of the pressure that your team faced today and how that can kind of help prepare for what will happen tomorrow? Actually, I think, like, for some reason, they were extra nervous today. I think they'll be a lot looser tomorrow. And they, they actually were pretty loose. I just feel like they weren't themselves quite, especially when we first came out. So we'll just be working to get their minds in a different place. Thanks so much. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks. Bart. Thank you, Laura. Congratulations, KJ Kindler. Okay, so the scores in this session, Oklahoma 197.725, UCLA 197.5, Utah 197.05. Those are the three finalists who will move on to the Super Six Finals tomorrow. We'll set up semifinal number two, which happens later today when we come back. What a great day of gymnastics. love this game stand for it stand in a bar in a barra or alongside 30,000 of your closest friends stand with the superstars the rising stars MLS stand as one don't miss the MLS action all weekend tonight on ESPN it's Philadelphia versus New York then tomorrow on Fox it's Orlando versus LA I'm hyped. A very special guest. My boy is hyped. And the one and only. Everybody's hyped. The man that needs no introduction. Kick that music. Come on. Conor McGregor keeps telling everybody he wants to fight. Let's make it happen. Come on. There are a hundred million plus reasons why the fight will happen. I'm undefeated. Never lost. Something is wrong with you. 
The debate starts here. First take, weekdays at 10 on ESPN. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships is presented by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. And in part by Golden Corral's Meat Lover Spectacular. Every night at dinner. And here are the final results in the first semifinal. Oklahoma, UCLA, and Utah advancing in a thriller this afternoon. Laura Rutledge is down with their head coach, Megan Marsden. All right, thank you so much, Bart. And coach, you called that beam rotation redemption at its finest. Why is that for this team? Well, I have a few in the lineup last year that were with us when we didn't move on due to balance beam. And I really felt like they were on a mission from the moment that happened. They said next year will be different. And it was just a lot of fun tonight. That's a long wait, but they've been working every day. Now that you do advance, what about this team's fight today do you think helps you in Super 6? Well, it's not just today. This team's been fighting all year, and we've had many obstacles with injury especially. I'm so proud of them. They have stayed on a mission that they were going to be the tenacious 12 and take it all the way. And now we're in the Super 6, and I feel like they have a shot to just go out there and give it everything because it's over after tomorrow for this season. Michaela Skinner, a part of that tenacious 12, and maybe one of the more tenacious ones. Her floor routine, of course, exciting. What would you say about the way she competed as a freshman for your team today? Well, she acts very veteran-like. I don't even know if I can fully call her a freshman when she's on the competitive floor. She has brought confidence to our group. Her confidence and the way she carries herself is so infectious, and I have girls on my team that have been helped by Michaela being on their team. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to Utah for advancing through. What a thriller this afternoon. Kathy Johnson Clark, you know, we thought there would be some drama. That was exciting. You know, we have the Magnificent Seven, the Fierce Five, the Final Five. Now we have the what? Tenacious, Tenacious 12. Tenacious 12. the Super Six. It was so great to see them come together as a team to redeem themselves from last year. Last year was heartbreaking. This was just fantastic to see them do it on balance beam. Now we thought that semifinal one would feature Oklahoma, Utah, and UCLA advancing. Let's take a look at semifinal number two, which comes up tonight. <laughs> if we the thought this one was intense, oh my gosh, there are so many top teams in this semifinal. LSU should, just like Oklahoma, be able to swim right through, but as we've learned, nothing is inevitable in gymnastics. Things happen. So it's all up for grabs. You know, we had hoped early on in the year that we might end up with a Super 6 final, which featured Oklahoma and LSU. We're halfway there after semi-final one. There's four SEC teams in this evening session. It's going to be intense. It, it will be intense. We're going to see some high scores. We're going to see some very, very close scores. Everything's going to matter. All right. What a great day of gymnastics here in St. Louis. It is the first of three competitions. Semi-final two is coming up later tonight and then tomorrow night the Super 6 Finals. So Oklahoma, UCLA and Utah advance to the Super 6 here at the Chaffetz Arena for Kathy Johnson-Clark and Laura Rutledge. I'm Bar Connor saying so long from St. Louis. Stay tuned tonight at ESPNU at 8 Eastern for session 2 of the Women's NCAA Championship. Coming up next is the NBA The Jump presented by Carfax. Welcome to the...